the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. What really happened here early in July 1947? Did, as many people claim, an alien spacecraft crash here in the desert? What was it doing here? Were there aliens on board? And what were they wearing? His name was Zorag because it was written on his jumpsuit. And has the entire incident been covered up by the US government? Well, I do believe there was a cover-up of some kind. He was flown back to Bowling Air Force Base outside of Washington and was sworn to secrecy by the president. And Mysterious Planet go a step further and investigate the possible link between the Roswell incident, alien abduction, and the predicted destruction of the planet. It would have been a worldwide panic that the world was going to end in 2012, so the government were lost all control, and that's why they covered up Roswell. Armed with the latest state-of-the-art technology, a bit of common sense, and a credit card, I would dare to dig deeper than previous television documentaries. And I would bring a let's wrap this up once and for all kind of approach to the Roswell investigation. But first, let's pay a visit to the Roswell of today. You haven't got the car keys, have you? To get some more background on the original incident, Lee pays a visit to the Roswell Museum. But then, drama. You cannot film any part of the museum, inside or out. You cannot film or talk to any part. They're not appreciated, and this is a serious event. And, and so I have the right to say no to anyone. If, if you can't abide by that, then you do need to leave. Okay? Thank you. Lee experiences a fresh cover-up, not from the government, but from the museum itself. Well, um, that's... That's a bit unfortunate, really. Uh, we're not allowed to film in the, the Roswell Museum. It seems um, something to do with the Bigfoot Conference a few weeks back, but uh, never mind, we'll uh, keep moving on and carrying on with the documentary. So what do we know so far? On July 4th, 1947, many eyewitnesses claimed strange activity in the night sky. Then, on July 7th, Major Jesse Marcel of Roswell's 509th Bomber Command is called to investigate some strange debris found by rancher Mac Brazell at the Foster Ranch near Roswell. He causes a media sensation by claiming the wreckage was from a UFO, a story that is initially confirmed by the military. But then, drama. Just two days later, after a military cleanup of the site, the story had changed. Jesse Marcel goes public, saying it was nothing more than debris from a weather balloon and metallic radar targets. Fast forward to 1978. Professor Stanton Friedman interviews Jesse Marcel, who now claims it was all a cover-up, that the strange debris was out of this world. Later, more people come forward. Now, we even have stories of alien bodies. Once we began to hear stories about aliens being on board, we began to get contradictions. Some said there were two bodies, others three. Two dead and one still living. Some said there were as many as eight, as if they're on board some sort of intergalactic maxi-taxi. Regardless of the facts... The legendary Roswell incident has begun. And if Lee and his team are going to solve this mystery, they will need to look at it from all angles. And as always, he will rely on science by visiting the actual crash site. Lee explains how he will conduct a ground search. Oh, sorry, do you want to do that now? I wasn't ready for that. Have another crack at it. Lee explains how he will conduct a ground search. Yeah, well, basically, if you just want to take a walk with me, I'll take you through what we're doing here today. Um, the craft, we believe, came in here, um, east to west, and the um, original crater, Impact point would have been there, would have spewed across this area here, right across over here, and the impact debris field would have spread probably about 850 feet and probably about three quarters of a mile beyond there as well. They have fine-tuned their search by getting Television New Zealand's top reality show, Serious Crash Unit, to estimate and recreate the spacecraft's crucial final moments. This graphic recreation reveals that the craft probably rolled not once, not twice, but thrice. But unlike past documentaries that focus on hearsay and use gratuitous shots of filing cabinets, Lee wants to focus entirely on finding some actual pieces of wreckage. And helping him to do that will be Brisbane Spillane, a top videographer who was lucky to survive a snake attack in the jungles of Peru. Tom Walshy Walshman, he's filmed it all, from top feature films to weddings and colonoscopies. And finally, field producer and metal detector expert A.J. Johnsman. But it won't always go to plan. Yeah, I need to hold that on, see. Or tape it, maybe tape it up. Broadcasting 
live from the UFO capital of the universe. This is KBIM 94.9 FM. Roswell. Welcome back to Roundtable. With me uh, as our second guest this morning is Lee with Mysterious Planet from uh, New uh, Zealand. From New Zealand. Great to be here, Tom. Now, the folks down there, had they ever heard about Roswell? Oh, yeah. Uh, Roswell's a big one. I mean, I think there's probably an affinity with, with Roswell in a way. We've got our own incident that happened back in New Zealand a number of yeah. years ago, back in uh, 19, uh, 1948, I believe. What y'all got? And that was called the, the Pukekohe incident. It's yeah. a similar thing, really. A, um, a farmer who was more like a horse breeder, actually, a miniature horse breeder. Right. You know, the, the Shetlands and that, that kind. He found this disc, um, this thing out on his farm. It was crashed on his farm. Yeah, it was crashed. It was crashed. I don't know why it crashed. Um, What's the problem with that? Them things crash all the time. You figure these guys have higher intelligence, but their their vehicles are crashing. Then drama, as Lee has kicked off the show in favor of Miss New Mexico. So, I am a young music education major, and I encourage many young women to get involved in the Miss America system. It's a wonderful organization. But he has a busy day of media planned regardless. Nobody talked about Roswell from 47 to 70 something. I think what people got to remember with the Roswell story is that they managed to kill the story. That it, it died until the late 1970s when the story came back up. So there was really no research done uh, about the, the crash until then. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. It was nice meeting you as well. Hi, Nicole. Hi. How's it going? Great. I think you did a really good job on the radio show. You probably don't hear this enough, but I think it's really... Uh, Really top stuff, and um, Thank you. we're um, kind of staying here as well, back at the, the hotel up the road there, the, the Roswellian. And uh, I don't know what you're doing after this, but we've got a bit of a mini bar there, and it's, it's pretty well stocked. <laughs> a jacuzzi and stuff, and maybe you want to come back and have a bit of a, a bit of a party. But um, um, it's 8:30 in the morning. Is it? Yeah. Uh, you're not where I come from. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> no, thanks. Great, great stuff. The fact that he'd ever spoken to the president, talked to the president, or written to the president. And I was very curious about that. It's Jerry Pippen. I'm now in the audience. And you have, uh, you have asked uh, these fellows questions before, but you're going to do it again. Uh, with that technology available to them to come that far and that control of that kind of energy, do you think some people might find it hard to believe that it would come into our atmosphere and, and, and crash with that ability to to do what they can. Sometimes the, the higher the performance of the craft, the more likely it is to crash. Really? Coming up, could the strange piece of wreckage be from another solar system? We meet Don Ray Walton. When was the last time you actually had contact with your extended family? Oh, uh, you mean the alien? Yeah. And we talked to perhaps the last living person who saw the wreckage and small bodies that were out of this world. God damn it, it was 60 years ago, and I can still see them body. The desert near Roswell, New Mexico. Some believe that an alien spacecraft crashed here in 1947. The official story, however, is that it was radar targets and bits of weather balloon. Later, that it was actually a part of a top-secret project called MOGO. But was that a cover-up? Our government, or any government, is capable of telling the people what they don't think they should know. I'm not saying they did, but they, they covered something up. And uh, I believe that. I've watched a few other documentaries on it. Jesse Marcel Jr., the son of the man.